In 1970, the Sicilian Mafia Commission was revived and consisted of ten members but would initially be ruled by a triumvirate consisting of Gaetano Badalamenti, Stefano Bontad, and the Corleonesi boss Luciano Leggio. However, the Corleonesi would be represented by Leggio's protege, Salvatore Rina, the man who would orchestrate an unparalleled slaughter of men of honor known as the Great Mafia War. Our story today is about Stefano Bontad, the infamous Sicilian Mafia boss, who was widely known as the Prince of Villagrazia due to his influential position and authority in the Villagrazia neighborhood of Palermo, Sicily. However, in a tragic turn of events in 1981, Bontad fell victim to a ruthless assassination orchestrated by the Corleonesi. Bontad's murder served as a harrowing symbol of the cutthroat nature of the Mafia, where power struggles often led to bloodshed. The echoes of his assassination continue to reverberate, forever etching his name in the annals of Sicilian organized crime. Stefano Bontad was born Stefano Bontate on April 23, 1939, in Palermo, Sicily, into a family of mafiosi. His father, Don Paulino Bontad, also known as Little Paul, was renowned for having enormous political clout. Don Paulino's path was similar to that of many mafiosi of his generation. He initially supported the cause of Sicilian separatism before converting to a fervent Christian Democrat supporter. Don Paulino was one of the most powerful mafiosi on the island. He also served as a pallbearer at the funeral of mafia boss Calogero Vizzini, who rose to prominence in Sicily during World War II and ruled until his death in 1954. Stefano Bontad and his brother Giovanni Bontad, who would become a lawyer, studied at a Jesuit college. In 1964, at the age of 25, Stefano Bontad became the boss of the family when his father stepped down because he suffered from diabetes. Like his father, Stefano was known for his friendship with powerful local politicians and was the charismatic head of what was believed to be the largest single mafia family of Palermo. According to some accounts, it was Lucky Luciano, after being deported from the United States to Italy in 1946, who first advised the Sicilians to form the commission, which had helped to keep peace among U.S. mob families. The new mafia order worked for a while, as the Palermo clans divided up the growing pie of contraband cigarettes, government contracts, and real estate money during the 1950s and 1960s. But the commission fell apart in 1963 with the outbreak of the First Mafia War. According to one of Stefano's closest friends at a point in time, Tommaso Buscetta, the war was orchestrated by Mafia boss Michela Cavateo. However, it backfired in June 1963, when a car bomb meant for the boss of Schiacoli and head of the commission, Salvatore Greco, blew up and killed seven Italian police officers, and would become known as the Schiacoli Massacre. With the bomb of Schiacoli, the First Mafia War suddenly turned into the first war against the Mafia. Some 10,000 police officers combed Sicily and in a matter of months arrested 1,903 mafiosi, including Cavateo and most of the major bosses. Cavateo was arrested in July 1963, and in December 1963 he received a four-year sentence for criminal association, despite an indictment for ten murders. After appeal, his sentence was reduced to two years. However, on December 10, 1969, Cavateo and three of his men were killed by a mafia hit squad which included Bernardo Provenzano, Calogero Bagarella, Emanuele D'Agostino and Gaetano Grotto of Stefano Bontad's crime family, and Damiano Caruso, a soldier of Giuseppe di Cristina, the mafia boss of Risi. This attack is known as the Viale Luzio Massacre. The killers entered the office of the construction company of Girolamo Moncada, but Cavateo was able to shoot and kill Calogero Bagarella and wound Caruso before Provenzano killed him with a submachine gun, earning himself a reputation as a mafia killer.
In 1970, the Sicilian Mafia Commission was revived and consisted of ten members but would initially be ruled by a triumvirate consisting of Gaetano Badalamenti, Stefano Bontad, and the Corleonesi boss Luciano Leggio. However, the Corleonesi would be represented by Leggio's protege, Salvatore Rina, the man who would orchestrate an unparalleled slaughter of mafiosi, known as the Great Mafia War. Stefano Bontad was banished to the mainland, specifically Qualiano in Campania, following his arrest in 1972 after Pietro Scaglioni, the chief prosecutor of Palermo and his driver, were murdered on May 5, 1971, when he returned from his daily visit to the tomb of his wife at the Cappuccini Cemetery in Palermo. The policy of banishing mafiosi to other areas in Italy backfired, because they were able to establish contacts outside the island as well, and this is when Stefano linked up with Giuseppe Sciorio of the Maestro clan of the Camorra. Stefano Bontad and other banished mafiosi managed to get into the market of international cigarette smuggling by imposing first their protection, and later their involvement, upon the smugglers in Naples, who were connected with the Camorra, and Palermo who had been running this activity since the 1950s. Bontad became part of a network involved with the processing and trafficking of heroin from Turkey to the United States, where it was supplied to the Gambino family, through John Gambino. The Cherry Hill Gambinos, a faction formed by John Gambino, were the pivot of Sicilian Mafia operations in the United States. Nearly all the exiles who would dominate the heroin consortium were clustered around them. Salvatore Inzerillo, who would make them billionaires, was their inseparable companion. Inzerillo was born in Palermo, and later married the daughter of his mother's brother, Rosario Di Maggio, the boss of the Paso di Regano Mafia family. Inzerillo was a close ally of Stefano Bontad and Gaetano Badalamenti, and a relative of the New York City Mafia boss, Carlo Gambino. When Rosario Di Maggio retired, Inzerillo was then chosen to head the family's clan. Stefano also had ties to Giulio Andriotti, an Italian politician and statesman who served as the 41st Prime Minister of Italy and was leader of the Christian Democracy Party and its right wing. According to Mafia Turncoat, Francesco Marino Manoia, Andriotti contacted Bontad to try to prevent the Mafia from killing D.C. politician Piersanti Mattarella. Mattarella became the president of the autonomous Sicilian region in 1978 and wanted to clean up the government's public contracts racket that benefited Cosa Nostra. However, after the murder of Mattarella on January 6, 1980, Andriotti again contacted Bontad to try to straighten things out. According to Marino Manoia, Bontad told Andriotti, We are in charge in Sicily, and unless you want the whole D.C. cancelled out, you do as we say. Reportedly, Antonino Giuffre, a mafioso who was a key aide to Mafia Kingpin Bernardo Provenzano but turned state witness, said Stefano Bontad was also in touch with Silvio Berlusconi in the mid-1970s, when Berlusconi still was just a wealthy real estate developer. Bontad visited Berlusconi's villa in Arcor on the outskirts of Milan, his contact was Vittorio Mangano, a convicted mafioso who used to be a stable manager there. Giuffre said Stefano Bontad and some of his close aides used to meet Berlusconi using visits to Mangano, as an excuse. After Luciano Leggio's arrest in 1974, his place was taken by two of his lieutenants, Salvatore Rina and Bernardo Provenzano. Nicknamed the Beasts because of their ferocity, they were the most dangerous men that Luciano Leggio had at his disposal. Although Stefano Bontad was the son of a renowned Mafia boss, and seen as the undisputed candidate to sit on the Sicilian Mafia Commission, in 1974 the commission was reconstituted under the leadership of Badalamenti. The commission was meant to settle disputes and keep the peace, but Leggio and his stand-in and successor, Salvatore Rina, were plotting to decimate the Palermo clans, including Bontad and Bontad's ally, Salvatore Inzerillo. At the close of 1978, the leadership of the Sicilian Mafia changed and Gaetano Badalamenti was expelled from the commission. Salvatore Rina then installed Michele Greco, also known as the Pope, as the new head of the commission. 
This signaled the end of a period of relative calm and indicated a significant shift inside the Mafia. Greco would later utilize this opportunity to lure several of Bontad's friends to their demise in what would be called the Great Mafia War. In order to account for substantial missing funds, Bontad and Inzerillo were called to a meeting of top Mafia bosses in February 1981. They had been skimming for years, selling the consortium's heroin in New York, keeping a portion of the money, and blaming it on the inferior quality of the heroin for the lower prices paid by American clients. To prove it, some of their couriers were bringing back a few kilos of low-grade junk. Inzerillo had sold 50 kilos of heroin for Legio's Corleonisi and kept the money, estimated to about $10 million. He said the Americans hadn't paid up yet and promised to produce the money in March at the Mafia summit. In fact, he, Bontad and Badalamente plotted to kill Legio's surrogates on the commission when the March meeting convened. Bontad wanted to kill Salvatore Arena and take direct control of heroin trafficking. However, Bontad and Inzerillo's would-be successors both ratted on them and Legio heard all about the plot in prison. On April 23, 1981, as he was returning home from a party in honor of his 42nd birthday, Stefano Bontad stopped his Alfa Romeo for a red light while his armed escort drove on. He was shot to death by Giuseppe Greco with a Kalashnikov machine gun. Inzerillo thought he was safe because of the $10 million he still owed Leggio, but on May 11th, he was gunned down in Palermo as he strolled towards his recently acquired bulletproof car. He was rendered almost unrecognizable by a hail of bullets from the same Kalashnikov that killed Bontad. Within days of the killing, one of Inzerillo's brothers, his son, and several of his top mafia soldiers disappeared. Gaetano Badalamente lost 11 relatives. Giuseppe Greco is suspected of killing around 80 people on behalf of Rina, including Bontad and Inzerillo. He led a death squad of hitmen, which included Mario Prestifilippo and Giuseppe Lucchese. Filippo Marchese, boss of Corso de Milla, also took an active part in the slaughter. From 1981 to 1983 there were at least 400 Mafia killings in Palermo and as many again across Sicily. In 1983, in Palermo's bunker courthouse, a witless and hapless youth named Vincenzo Sinagra described the horrors of those killing days. He had taken part himself in a place that came to be known as the Death Chamber of Piazza San Erasmo.